Here we go, another tier list video for patch 5.0. We're working our way up the tier list and now we've made it to high tier. That's the A tier on our list. These are the characters you've seen on stream before and are basically guaranteed to see in top 32 of a major tournament. The mark of a high tier isn't just results either. High tiers seriously excel in a few areas and don't have too many flaws. So now you're gonna hear more pros than cons. We're also gonna be talking about playstyles, tools, and techniques because high tiers have those too. The high tiers do still have one or two weaknesses or a few bad matchups that keep them from being top tier, but it doesn't matter much, these characters are still so great that you can't use them as Johns if you lose. Speaking of great, if you want to get so great at Smash that you never have to break out the Johns, be sure to check out ProGuides.com. We have a new pro course available by MK Leo himself where he helps give you insight on the game to improve like he did. We've also got advanced character info, guides from top players, and live coaches at the ready. If you're looking to destroy the competition, click the link in the description and look no further than pro guides. And speaking of top tiers, let's get started with a character that's actually moved down the list. We've downgraded Shulk from top tier to high tier. Shulk has massive Ike-like hitboxes along with a wheel of buffs that he can pick from. He has a great matchup spread and can beat characters like Olimar, Mario, and Mega Man. But right now, Shulk's results aren't quite top tier. We're starting to see some breakout performances from Komei and Nico, but we need to see a bit more. And results aside, Shulk does have flaws, mainly in the form of mediocre frame data. Shulk's moves can be a bit laggy and open him up. Still, we might just be waiting for the Shulk mains to level him up. If this JRPG character grinds up to endgame, we could see a future where Shulk is a godly top 5 character. While we're talking about moving characters, we're gonna cover Greninja. Greninja is a super fast, super hype character that has lots of room for optimization. However, Greninja's been getting less popular as the game goes on, and that's bad news for Smash's favorite frog. We're predicting that Greninja will drop out of high tier as players lose interest in him. Greninja still has all his awesome combos, kill confirms, and speedy edgeguards. He's still a great character on the offense, but his out of shield options are pretty rough. It doesn't sound like much, but getting stuck in shield is rough enough that we think it may drop the frog a tier in the future. Other high tiers are consistently proving themselves more as time goes on, but we'll keep him in A tier for now. When it came to out of shield options, Olimar's up smash was one of the best. Rest in peace, sweet captain. <laughs> okay, okay, it's not all that bad. Olimar got hit with nerfs harder than any other early meta top tier, and it probably was in no small part because everybody and their grandmothers complained about him. Even with the 3.1 nerfs, Olimar is still one of Ultimate's better characters. He racks up damage and takes a stock super fast, all while staying out of arm's reach. But those nerfs did matter. He was once a feature of top 8, and now his mains either have a pocket pick ready or just don't make it to top 8. The nerf seriously hurt his ability to defend himself, and since he was already a glass cannon, that's rough. It's not rough enough to make him a mid-tier, but it's rough that he's writing about it in his captain's log once the day is done. He's got feelings, guys. Here's another character that got nerfs, but for Pokemon Trainer, those nerfs also came with buffs. But for Pokemon Trainer, those nerfs also came with buffs. Listening to the people, Nintendo nerfed Ivysaur and buffed Charizard. Was this an overall buff? Overall nerf? It depends on who you ask, but it for sure encourages Pokemon Trainer mains to rely less on Ivysaur and play a more balanced style. Now you gotta use all your Pokemon instead of just grinding 1 to level 80 and using it to destroy the entire Elite Four. Nerf or buff, we don't think the changes are enough to move PT up or down a tier. This is still the character that's always getting results and only really struggles when their game plan gets way thrown off and stuck on a Pokemon that doesn't fit the situation or matchup. Speaking of results, Mega Man has been getting more and more of them. There's whispers of the old school legend even being top tier. We're keeping him in high tier because he's combo food and he struggles when you push him out of the mid-range zone he likes to fight in. Still, this man is a rock solid pick. He's super durable, he's got great moves across the board, and have you seen all his new Metal Blade tech? One hit with the Metal Blade at high percents and that's an up tilt and a stock. Mega Man looks so hype that you'd think it was the 90s. Then there's Mario, another old school high tier. Like Mega Man, Mario's also been doing well and only a few weaknesses keep him out of top tier. Mario struggles to get kills and often relies on a raw move to do the job. He can also struggle against disjoints and big hitboxes, but his combo ability alone outweigh those weaknesses. 
On top of combos, he's got good recovery, good anti-zoning tools, good matchups with a lot of the cast, and a good neutral game. He's one of the more well-rounded combo characters in the game, and that makes the Jumpman high tier. Pac-Man? Is that another old school legend? The granddaddies of gaming are doing pretty well in Ultimate. Pac-Man is the most baffling high tier you ever saw, so it took a while for folks to realize just how good he was. Now with T and Sinji showing up big, it's pretty clear that this character's got the stuff. Pac-Man is a weird sort of zoner that waits for a slip up, then punishes with an over-the-top combo involving fruit, a fire hydrant, and two red boots. Pac-Man eats stocks like he eats ghosts, and is pretty capable on the offense and the defense. His grab is still super punishable, and his hitboxes can be a bit small. There are characters who outbox and outzone him, but not too many. There's a chance that, as people learn how Pac-Man works, Pac-Man won't do as well. But his raw tools and techniques are just so good, so that keeps him in high tier. We can't call this fighter old school. This fighter is an outright dinosaur. And a robot. We're not talking about Transformers or Metal Yoshi. We're talking about Rob. Rob is an insanely versatile fighter that applies pressure just by existing. You've always got to be watching because Rob is always in position to hit you. Rob pretty much has it all. Combos, range, kill confirms, big hitboxes, durability, recovery. So where's the rise of the machines? Why doesn't Ultimate look like a Terminator movie? Mostly because Rob is as heavy as Mega Man and gets comboed too, making it a nightmare for him to get out of disadvantage. Plus, lots of Rob's favorite moves are punishable, except down tilt. Especially if the opponent can parry. That neutral air is not always free. Up next, we've got another oldie. You're basically tuning into a classic rock radio station right now. But this time, it's a fighting game legend, Ken. We talked a bit about it with Ryu, but we'll say it again. Ken and Ryu both got buffed, but Ken got more of the love from the players. That's because Ken's buffs lined up better with the style of his character, focusing less on his range and more on his boxing. And those buffs made Ken one of the scariest characters up close. His special moves and unique inputs can threaten kills, shields, and your percent. He stacks up damage and wraps up stocks. He just suffers from getting walled out of boxing range and caught off stage. Unfortunately, a lot of top tiers are great at edgeguarding and walling you out. The same can be said for Roy. Roy is super scary up close and can stack up damage and get kills super early. Even though Roy is a sortie, he can struggle from getting zone 2. His kill moves rely on him hitting with what's usually a sour spot, which is finicky. His disjoints aren't quite that big either, and his recovery isn't great, so edgeguarding is dangerous. But Roy makes up for that with really good tech chasing. He's got lots of tools to knock opponents around, and the speed to chase them down. If he lands a follow-up or gets the right read, he's likely getting a lot off of it too. So in Ultimate, Roy is finally our boy and finally gets to join his sortie friends at the top. Krom is pretty close to Roy, sharing a lot of the same moves and general streams. Despite that, the two are surprisingly different. For one, Krom has dad energy and Roy has son energy. That's not an opinion, that's just a fact from the lore. Krom has a cupboard full of number one dad mugs from Lucina and Roy's got a kingdom and legendary dad to live up to. Oh, and in terms of things that matter in the game, Krom doesn't have a sour or sweet spot on his sword. His disjoints are also longer, and he has better out of shield options, so in neutral and on the ground, he's a safer, more consistent pick. However, his recovery is worse, so he's weaker off stage. He can be just about as dynamic as Roy, though, and the two of them both have significant results from solo mains and top players. Tweak and MKLeo both have a pocket Roy and Krom, respectively. We're talking about sorties, so we can't forget about Marth, even though all of the Ultimate players did. Marth is such a weird character to rank, because you're pretty much always ranking against his placings. If we ranked purely on placing, Marth would be mid or low tier, but everyone knows he's not that bad. Because he's actually good, it's just Lucina is sort of a better version of him. Marth has great disjoints, hitboxes, moves, and setups. He can do damage, edge guard, get kills early, and has good out of shield options. The issue is that his sweet and sour spots make it harder to be consistent with him compared to Lucina. Most people just play Lucina to avoid dropping conversions, combos, and kill setups. Still, Marth could have more potential than most sorties. There are some seriously smooth tricks you can do with his sour spots. Ugh, another Fire Emblem sortie in high tier? Ultimate has been good to this series. At this rate, you know Byleth is gonna be DLC. Anyways, Ike had a brief moment in the sun where MKLeo and Mars made him look busted. 
His huge hitboxes, good combos, and insane kill power made him look like it was late game in Path of Radiance. Then people learned his timings and he became manageable. He's still good though. Those hitboxes and that strength is all still there. His recovery is also better than people claim. But he's pretty prone to combos and once you break through his wall of neutral airs, he struggles. Nowadays, Mars is too busy to make Ike look good because he's making Zero Suit Samus look even better. It's not just Mars either, Japan has tons of great ZSS mains too. So right now, ZSS is the best Metroid character in the game by a Brinstar mile. Without that suit, Samus is crazy fast, elusive, and lethal. ZSS has a thin hurtbox that's super hard to intercept in the air and her flip kick makes her even trickier on offense and defense. This is a rushdown character with strings at low percents, tech chases at mid percents, and tons of ways to take a stock. She's skilled on offense and defense. ZSS's main weakness is that a few of her important moves are pretty committal and she's lightweight. That means ZSS gets on the highlight reel as the playmaker and the played. Quick aerial movement is also how Yoshi got to high tier. Well, that and clicking that big green button. Yoshi has incredibly effective normal moves across the board, and it gives him insane offensive potential. This green dinosaur has damage for days as well as quick kill options like jab resets and raw aerials. He's pretty tough to kill too, since he can wall out with his eggs and he's got a good shield and a lot of weight. That weight also makes him easy to combo though, so he can take damage quickly too. Fortunately, his double jump armor can get him out of sticky situations, so you need to be frame perfect to combo him effectively. Like ZSS, some of his moves are committal and can get him punished. Still, Yoshi's been high tier for most of the game and it looks like he will be high tier for most of the game. He's just so fast in the air and has so many good moves. I swear, every time I touch that shield, a Nair is born. Last but not least is Wario. Like Yoshi, he's one of the weirder Mario characters and he's also a mess of good moves. Also like Yoshi, he's a Mario character that is separated into his own franchise for some reason. Wario is one of Ultimate's best pressure characters, in no small part because of the pressure that builds in his bowels. This guy has the waft, the big fart, the new rest. Wario has so many small strings and ways to build damage that pretty much every hit of his counts. At low, mid, or high percents, he's super dangerous. Wario has relentless offense, great recovery, and pretty solid defense. That makes him an easy high tier. His main drawbacks are getting walled out before he can combo an opponent and from opponents playing around tools like Waft. Lots of top tiers can go toe to toe or beat Wario by walling him out and watching out for his big threat moves. Alright, that rounds out the high tiers. These are characters you already see winning and getting into those top 8s. Lots of them have a few different top players championing them and they look good on paper and in practice. Despite that, most of them still have room to grow and new techniques to optimize and flesh out. As Ultimate gets older, expect to see even more flashy plays from the high tiers, but really from all tiers. And as the days go by, expect to see one more video from us on this topic. That's right, the last tier list video, the one on the top tiers. Get hyped, the best is yet to come, literally. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel now if you haven't and ring the bell for notifications so you get the lowdown on the tip top as soon as it drops.